Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, participants. Welcome to module four of this uh, Digital for Agriculture online training on harnessing the digital potential to accelerate agri entrepreneurship and the growth of youth, youth businesses. Module four will focus on emerging trends that's looking at opportunities offered by smart agriculture. So in this preparation, we'll give you an overview of the fourth module, which deals with the concept of smart agriculture and its opportunities. And these opportunities are really to enhance farmers' productivity and to stimulate the development of ICT for agriculture solutions. And as always, in order to familiarize you with the concept of smart agriculture, user cases will be presented to fully benefit from this course and learn more. You must read the course material complete <clears throat> that accompanies the narrative of the module. These resources can be downloaded from the online platform. So the concepts that we will be looking at in module four are precision farming, smart agriculture or smart farming, and then uh, the digital aspect of agriculture. So when we look at um, ICT for agriculture, oftentimes we are looking at precision farming and smart farming. And what is this smart farming? It's basically technologies for intelligent farm management. And its objective is to combine classical agriculture with digital and technical or solutions. This combination must support the farmer in his or her daily work in the farm to allow him or her to gain in efficiency. So digital farming integrates both concepts, that's precision farming and smart farming. It is there for the backbone of smart farming. And that's why we look at the ICT aspect of the agriculture. So the ICT bit of it is what makes it smart farming. So smart agriculture refers to the management of farms using information and communication technologies. Like I just mentioned, ICT for ag. So it's really using information communication technologies to do farming in a smarter way. And the importance and value of this smart farming is to increase the quality and quantity of products while optimizing the human capital, the human work required. In other words, the technologies will do more of the work and then you'll optimize um, the human interaction. So the whole point of using technology is really to increase the quantity and quality of the products to make farming easier and smarter. So some of the technologies used in smart agriculture include service architecture, applications and data. I'm sure very many of you have heard about big data and all these mobile applications across the continent for agriculture and then some um, examples of service architecture. And we'll see that as we go on with this module. So climate smart agriculture, what is climate smart agriculture? We are going to respond to that question. And then um, FAO's uh, approach illustrated by case studies. This is one of the approaches. I'll talk about it again in the next slides. The use of drones will illustrate that by case studies also. That is really precision agriculture. And then the use of artificial intelligence, again, will illustrate with case studies in the subsequent slides, then data management. So FAO three climate smart agriculture objectives, what are they? The first is sustainable increase in productivity and income. The second is ad adaptation to climate change. And the third is reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. As participants of the course, it's the onus is really on you to dig deeper into some of these um, objectives that we've just shared to read more about FAO's climate smart agriculture objectives. Increase productivity and income sustainably, adapt to climate change, and then reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So some of the examples of the climate smart agriculture at FAO. There is a publication here as recent as last year, 2021. And this publication is um, titled Climate Smart Agriculture, Projects from Around the World. 
it describes climate smart agriculture case studies from around the world, showing how the approach is being implemented to address the challenge of climate change and agriculture. So again, the onus is on you to go and read deeper and understand how climate smart agriculture is uh, being um, practiced around the, the world according to what FAO put together. And then another example is a video and that's the URA, the link. Again, I encourage one of you to go and watch it. This video basically shares results from projects in Kenya, Nigeria, um, and all these other countries, about five countries. And it shows Kenya smallholder farmers how they address climate change through integrated livestock systems and improve their income. So again, please um, just take time and watch and see. A lot of these countries listed are really developing countries. So I'm sure very many of us can relate. So again, the onus is on you to just go read and and just find out more. Then when we look at precision agriculture, that's drones in the service of ag agriculture and agribusiness. There's a case study from um, CTA, the Technical Center for Agriculture and uh, Rural Corporations. Uh, unfortunately, they closed shop, but there's so much information and literature online about um, their involvement with decision, uh, precision agriculture and the use of drones and some of their projects are still ongoing in various countries in, in, on the continent. So this is one of their publications to us called the ICT update it, and was dedicated to drones and drone services on the continent. So again, the literature is online, just go read. Uh, your country could be one of them. I know they have actively done this in countries like Ghana, in countries like uh, Uganda, Ethiopia, they have done a lot of this drone technology in Kenya. So just read about um, the drone services in agriculture, read about the um, policies and regulations. There's a publication on that also uh, around the continent, which, which countries on the continent allow drones to be used and which ones don't and why. And those that do, are there are some regulations and some guidelines to follow. So again, please um, participants take time to read and understand this. Moving on, artificial intelligence for agriculture. We have an example here, Nuru, the plant village, which uses predictive models to combat locust invasion. So again, this is for you too, for your own reading. These are just examples. Uh, there, are, there are a lot more, but these are just the ones that are picked out to broaden your understanding of how artificial intelligence or AI is used for agriculture. And then another project is the AgriPredict, which is in Zambia, and uses automated advice for small scale farmers. Please take time to read about these. And if you have any other examples of artificial intelligence for agriculture within your countries or with or, all those that you've been you've actively participated in, which may not really necessarily come from your, from your countries, kindly share them in the discussion on the online platform. So moving on to big data for agriculture, and this is something we'll look at in detail in the next slide, in the next uh, module, which is module five. Um, this really focuses on data management platforms, and there are quite a number of them, and these vary from big data open data and then mobile, mobile data collection. So again, the onus is on you as participants to dig deeper into what each of these concepts mean. What does big data mean? What does open data mean? And what does mobile data collection mean? And which organizations are involved with each of these and why? So just find out what kind of um, data is being collected, what it's being used for and where it's being applied. And then um, you could break it down depending. It could be data on livestock, it could be data on plants, it could be data on diseases and surveillance, it could be data on insects. So as long as it falls within the uh, scope of agriculture. So please take time to read each of these and please share your findings on the online platform so that we can engage and discuss more and learn from each of your countries. So again, once again, I thank you so much for listening.
and we look forward to hearing about your experiences in digital agriculture through the online forum. Please feel free to ask questions about this presentation or the documentation provided. We're here to help you deepen your understanding and we'll do anything within our power to make sure you pass the course. Thank you very much. And this is from the pedagogical support team. Let's continue engaging online and ask as many questions as you have. Thank you.